most of them are saying assalamu alaikum alaikum assalam alaikum barakatu abdullah al numan fahad radha irwan assalamu alaikum alaikum assalam umar faruk umar muhammad anwar zahid sani shamim Suleiman Shamsuddin you have on the YouTube H and M production Shahan Jafar, Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Zakir Naik, Wa alaikum, Assalam, Dara Barakatuh, The Big Gaplipa, Ivan Kurdi, Skit, Assalamu alaikum, Wa alaikum, Assalam, Ahmad Kosovic, I am a servant of Allah, Assalamu alaikum, Wa alaikum, Assalam, Ina, Geo Ridge, Assalamu alaikum brother, wa alaikum assalam. Mak Kamran. I'm Kamran from Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Farooq Hussain from Bangladesh. Ran 1Z. Assalamu alaikum brother, wa alaikum assalam. Usrayan Khan. Insight. Junaid Rizwan. Amtal Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam. Uthman Abu Bakr Bazi. Sister Gamiskad Bali, normal human. Mystery historian. Bia Bia, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam. Sun Star, Muhammad Ismail, how to ask questions. Best is on the WhatsApp as I mentioned earlier. Amtal Hafiz, Assalamu Alaikum, Alaikum Salam. I'm from Pakistan. Muntazir Ahmad. Ahmad Koswik. Sun Star. Halima Ji. Assalamu Alaikum, Alaikum Salam. Usaid Sheikh. Normally, as you know, my practice is that I go through the names and just read the first part. Assalamu alaikum, wishing them salams. They do duas for me, I do duas to them too. And because there are thousands of questions that are asked on the Facebook and YouTube, I have my team which selects the question because if I start reading, there will be a big gap between both the questions. So my team sends me on my mobile the selected questions from the live Facebook question that is asked, live YouTube question that is asked on my WhatsApp. And then I select from them. As you know, on the WhatsApp, the questions every week are in thousands, 5,000, 10,000. On the Facebook, there are several thousands more. On the YouTube, there are thousands all put together, about 20, 25,000 every week. From this, my team selects from the WhatsApp about 100 messages, 100 questions, and give me. And from that, I select about 15 or 20 to answer. And the remaining live questions are sent to me. Question post from the YouTube from Skype S C Y T H E. Assalamu alaikum, doctor. Wa alaikum assalam, Barakatuh. My question is that is wearing chain silver and silver ring haram in Islam? As far as wearing a silver ring or a silver chain, it's not prohibited. What is prohibited by a prophet is wearing of a gold chain. So wearing a gold chain for the men is prohibited, not for the women. And for the men, wearing silver, it is permitted. It doesn't come in the haram category. Whether you wear a chain or whether you wear a ring, it's permitted. But wearing gold, there's a clear-cut hadith that for the men, 
gold and silk is prohibited. For the women, it's permitted. For the men, wearing of gold and silk is prohibited. Hope that answers the question. We continue with the questions posed on the WhatsApp. The third question on the WhatsApp is Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. My name is Abdus Sami. I'm a student. I live in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Alhamdulillah, I have learned a lot from you. MashaAllah. My question is what is the difference between a dai and a scholar? I mean, as you have so much knowledge by the blessings of Allah, why don't you become a scholar? And I've told this earlier also that normally, as far as the Muslims are concerned, previously before internet became common or the social media, the Muslims could be broadly divided into four categories of Muslim. The namesake Muslims who don't follow Islam at all, but they call themselves Muslim, they don't pray, they don't follow the thing, they may not have knowledge about Islam. That's the namesake Muslim. Second would be Muslims having the basic knowledge of Islam. The third category would be students of knowledge, going to Islamic universities and getting knowledge of Islam. And the highest category are the scholars. But since now the world has become a global village and knowledge is easily accessible, you can ask Sheikh Google, go on the Google and ask anything. Since the 90s, now after the 2000, we find it's much more easier. So I personally classify the Muslim Ummah into six categories, I personally. I'm not talking about as per the Sharia, etc. One, again, are the namesake Muslims at the lowest level. The namesake Muslims, they may not be praying at all, they may not be practicing, they may not have knowledge about Islam, just namesake Muslims. There are quite a large number in different parts of the world. The second category is with those Muslims who have some knowledge of Islam, may not be all the basic knowledge, but they do have knowledge of Islam. The third category would be those which have the knowledge of the basic of the theme, the do's and don'ts, the farais and the haram, that's the third category. And the fourth category are those Muslims who like to do research and they go and find on the net, they want to do more research about Islam and they have that, that uh, passion for trying to find out what is right, what is wrong, what is haram, what is halal and they go to various Islamic websites and they do their own research. This is the fourth category. And the fifth category are the students of knowledge who have either gained knowledge a bachelor's in Islamic studies or some Islamic course whether Sharia, whether Tafsir, whether Hadith or their masters or their PhDs these are the people students of knowledge or oh, they have not gone to Islamic university but they have done so much research on their own that they come in the category of students of knowledge and the highest category are the scholars those who I would say are the experts are specialized in the field as far as a dai is concerned, a person with the namesake Muslim cannot be a dai. So, the first category cannot be a dai. The other five categories, a dai can be can belong to any of the categories. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, "It's a hadith mentioned in Sahih Bukhari." A prophet said, "Balligo anni wala aya." Propagate even if you know one verse. So, a dai can even be a person who has minimal knowledge of Islam. For him, the prophet said propagate even if you know one verse of Islam. As long as you know any aspect of Islam properly, as long as you know any aspect of Islam properly, it's your duty to propagate it. So the lowest level of da'i can be a Muslim who has some knowledge of Islam. A da'i can also be of the third category, who has knowledge of the basics, do's and don'ts, of the farais and the haram. He can even be on the fourth level, a student of knowledge, or, or, or a person who does research on the internet tries to find what is right or what is wrong, can be of the fifth level of student of knowledge. So Dai can either be a second level, third level, fourth level, or fifth level, depending on he may start at the second level or start at the third level, then reach the fourth level, can reach a fifth level, depending upon the experience he has and the amount of time he does in research or he goes and studies in a university, whether he does bachelor's or master's or PhD, then he comes in the category of a student of knowledge. Or he does so much research on his own or goes and meets different scholars, he comes in the category of student of knowledge or he does the research on his own, going to various Islamic websites, trying to find out the answer, he reaches the fourth level, that is a person who does research on his own. A dai can be of various different levels, the second, third, fourth, 
or fifth level. And but naturally, the more he does dawa, the more he involves, Allah gives him more knowledge and he keeps on climbing up the ladder. There are some dais who reach up to the level of becoming a scholar. So the difference between a scholar and a dais, a scholar is the person who specialized. And again, a scholar is specialized in one particular field. For example, if he's a scholar in tafsir of the Quran, he's called as a mufassir. Tafsir of the Quran. He specialized and knows the rules and regulation of how to do a tafsir. Or he may be specialized in the field of hadith. That is the action and things of the beloved Prophet ﷺ. If he specialized in the field of hadith, he's called as a muhaddis. Just because he's done bachelor's in hadith doesn't give him the title of muhaddis. Or if he's done master's or PhD in hadith, he doesn't become a muhaddis or a scholar of hadith. If he has reached that level where he can critically analyze or independently give a ruling on the hadith or has reached a level of specialization, then he can be called a scholar. He may not do PhD, he may not do master's, he may not do bachelor's, but yet if he, if he has studied under scholars, like how people did in the past, and has the acumen and the knowledge and the basics of hadith, he's a modernist, or of tafsir, he becomes a mufassir. Or if he does in sharia, he is a faqi. So a scholar is the person who specialized in the field and knows all the rules and regulation of that particular field and independently can give a verdict on that particular case, then he becomes a scholar. And as I said in my earlier answers, that today the true scholars are very few in the world. Really, if you want to know about scholars in the field of hadith, muhaddis are very few in the world today. Handful, maybe hundred or a little bit more. Or mufassir who are told, yes, student of knowledge, there are umpteen, tens of thousands, maybe hundred thousand also. But scholars are very few. What is the role of a dai? The role of a dai is, as the beloved prophet said, balli gu anni walo aya, propagate even if you know one verse. A dai doesn't have to be a scholar, but a dai is a person who conveys the message of Islam to the masses. What he does? He does his research and tries and, try and find out the right answer. After knowing the answer, he makes it palatable or he makes it digestible to the masses. It can either be the Muslims at large or can be non-Muslims. A dai is the one who conveys the message of Islam to those who are unaware of it. If he does Islam to the Muslims, giving them more knowledge of Islam is a dai, but specialized in the field of doing dawah to the Muslims. And such dai today, we have thousands in English, thousands in Urdu, thousands in Arabic, and the list is long. So as far as dai is concerned, giving dawah to the Muslims specifically, talking them about the tafsir of the Quran, of the hadith, of the sharia, of the ruling. The role of a dai is to learn from the scholars and make it more presentable because they may be good in public speaking, they may, they may be good in logic, they may put their own method of how to present it. A scholar is technically correct. Every scholar or most of the scholars are not dais. They are well versed in the field but they are not dais. There are some scholars who also dais, we will come to it later on. So as far as dai is concerned, the role of a dai is to see to it that he reads on that issue and gives a talk. He reads or hears video cassettes or does research of various scholars on that subject and he presents it to the masses in a more digestible or more palatable way. So a dai may be more well known to the world than a scholar and people differ who is higher, a scholar or a dai, and I said that both are, both are equally, mashallah, Allah has rewarded both. But as Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Fusilla, chapter number 41, verse number 33, the ayah I started my talk with, Allah says that, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَالَ مِمَّنْ ضَوِي لَلَّهِ وَأَمِنُ صَالِحَوْمْ وَقَالَ إِنَّنِ مِنْ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Who is better in speech than one who invites to the way of thy Lord, works righteousness and says that I'm Muslim. So based on this verse of the Quran, Allah says, the best professional for thy. And, of course, the best example 
uh, is, is the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You are the messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And the role of a messenger is to convey the message. His knowledge, of course, came from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. All the religious knowledge that he got came from Allah. And he was the best of the messengers. And then in the Ummah today, then we have the Khulfa Rashidin. Then, then we have the Sahaba. Then I gave this in detail in my early answer that who should we refer to in terms of Islam. And in terms of scholars, as I said, that few scholars have to die. And the best example that I can think of is about, the, the, the best example I can think is Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah was a scholar in various subjects. He was Mufassir of the Quran, he was Muhaddis, he, he was a Faqi, his mantik, his logic was so strong. He was a Dai. He was an expert in the Bible religion also. So he is one of the few scholars who is also called as a Mujaddid of Islam. And a beloved Prophet, a beloved Prophet Wasallam said that in every century there will be a Mujaddid who will revive Islam. And he is one of the Mujaddid in his time. He was a Mujaddid, mashallah. And he was expert in various subjects, in various fields, including comparative religion, including Dawah. So he not only did dawah to the Muslims, even to non-Muslims. He was expert in comparative religion. The book that, that he has written on Christianity is fabulous. So he's one of the best examples that I can give you of a person who was an excellent scholar and excellent dai also. Among the dais that we can think of in this present time or in the last few decades, I can think of Sheikh Ahmad Didad. That is dai who was specialized amongst non-Muslims. There are dais who are specialized among Muslims, there are many, thousands in number. But dais who are specialized in giving dawah to the non-Muslims, the best example I can think of is Sheikh Ahmed Didad. And he was referred to as the Muslim scholar of the Christian Bible. So Sheikh Didad was a dai. He had the basic knowledge of Islam as he started doing dawah. And as you know, he has studied only till standard six. Even though he has studied to standard 6, he challenged the best in Christianity. He alone, at his time, took the whole of Christendom single-handedly. As far as dawah to Christians is concerned. And Allah blessed him with the knowledge. And he specialized. He was a salesman. An uneducated person. Hardly he passed only standard 6. But with Allah's help, he reached, he became a stalwart, the best I would say in the field of Dawah, so much so that he got the King Faisal Award in the service of Islam. And Alhamdulillah, the amount, so I would say he was a Dai, he had the basic knowledge of the Quran, of other aspects of Islam, but as far as comparative religion, as far as Christianity is concerned, I would call him a Dai as well as a scholar of the Bible. I don't know of any Muslim at this time, who had, who could convince a Christian or could debate with a Christian as much as what he could do. And Allah blessed him. So, Sheikh Ahmed Didad is one of the best dais that I know at his time. That's in the 80s and in the 90s. And he was also a scholar of Christianity. A dai, a scholar of Christianity. Now you ask me the question that I am a Dai, I have knowledge. I am a Dai, yes, you are right. I have knowledge. I always say, the more you know, the more you realize that you don't know. The more you know, the more you realize that you don't know. When you start doing that, you say, okay, fine, you read the Quran, Alhamdulillah, understand. Islam, oh, Quran, oh, there are so many tafasibs, oh, Ibn Qasir and so on and so forth. Hadith, okay, read Bukhari, not Bukhari, Muslim. And the more you know, the more you realize that you don't know. Alhamdulillah, Allah blessed me that I was in the medical field in the second year of my medical college when I met Sheikh Ahmed Didad in 1987. And he was the person who was instrumental in changing me from a doctor of a body to a doctor of a soul. And Sheikh Ahmed Didad gave it on a platter as far as Christianity is concerned